Bent over row is definitely a great movement, as is a chest supported row for developing back, specifically lat size and strength. But have you included the pendle row in your complement of back exercises. If you haven't, make sure you do because the weight starts on the ground and returns to the ground for every single rep. Generally, you can manage a little bit more weight. There's a definite stimulus to kind of your core. So your abdominals, your lower back and your QL area that are required to work as you're performing that pendle row that because you're using a larger weight and your hinge just a little bit lower are more active and engaged than they might be in a bent over row and most certainly over a chest supported row. A couple of things to focus on as you perform the pendle row. Make sure that you're moving both slow enough and with the appropriate load to feel your lats and parts of your upper back working. If you're turning this into a kind of hip exercise where you're driving your hips up to assist the movement. Those are kind of like those cheater reps, which can be great to finish a set, but for the majority of your repetitions per set, you should feel your lats and rhomboids and parts of your upper back working more than your lower back. There's nothing wrong with a little cheater rep here and there. Secondly, let's make sure that you're keeping your back in a safe position as you're lifting. Even if that means that you have to stand up, reset your abdominals and lower back to brace before finishing the rest of your set, that's a lot better than if you start to round your back and continue with more repetitions in that position putting yourself at the risk for injury. So that's the Pendle Row. If you like this video, do us a favor, click like and subscribe. We appreciate it, honestly we do. The algorithm appreciates it as well. So we'll see you on the next video.